Good afternoon. Welcome to Tuesdays in the Chapel here at Whiteman Chapel at Scarrett Bennett Center. Sing a joyful noise to the beloved, all peoples of the earth. Sing love with a glad heart. Join hands in the great dance of life. Know that the beloved of your heart is the divine presence. Love created us, and we belong to the Most High. We are born to be loving expressions of the Creator's divine plan. Open the gates of your hearts with gratitude and enter love's court with praise. Give thanks to the beloved. Bless love's holy name. For the love is of God and live in your heart forever with faith, truth, and joy. Now in all that is to come, hallelujah, amen. Silent prayer and meditation. Amen. We are grateful this afternoon to have with us Pastor Pamela Keller, of the pastor of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Nashville. She sure serves as the director of Fellowship for Women in Color in Ministry. She is a professionally trained musician and with a concentration in piano, flute, and voice. She was a Fisk Jubilee singer while a student at Fisk University and is currently the music director for the TSU alumni chapter of the Mr. Singer, excuse me for mispronouncing that. Uh, but this afternoon we will have Pastor Pam deliver word and music. May you worship and enjoy Pastor Pam. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. Some 
one sweet day. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table some of these days. Oh, I'm going to tell God all my troubles. I'm going to tell God all my troubles one of these days. Oh, I'm going to tell God all my troubles. I'm going to tell God all my troubles one of these days. This day we began with the song, Sitting at the Welcome Table. On this, the last few days of Women's History Month, we come because we know that women, just as well as men, are welcome at the table. There have been times when we've been left, left out or uninvited, but we sing this song because we know that God has invited us to the table. Let us pray. Almighty Creator, we thank you for all that you are. We praise you, dear God, for you are the rock of salvation. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the God of Sarah. You're the God of Hagar, Keturah, Rebecca, the God of Leah and Rachel, Bela and Zippah. God, you're the God of Malah, Noah, Holgal, Milka, and Terzah. God, you're the God of my ancestors, Cleora, Viney, Bessie, and the God whom I serve. God, we've come to praise you, to thank you for allowing us to come into this setting, to lift, up, to lift you up and sing your praises, and to give testimony to how great you are, in, in as great you are and great you are for creating women. So we thank you, God. We ask that you will come into come and be with us and allow us to come into your presence as we come before these your people just to share who you are and how great you are we ask this god knowing if we ask it in your son's name where you are glorified it shall be done so we ask right now in the mighty and matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen women's month is a time to reflect on the courage of women in past generations and to celebrate how their efforts and their bravery afforded women the opportunities and freedoms that we have today. We celebrate Women's History Month to remind ourselves of the accomplishments of women throughout the years to our culture and to our society. From science to politics, from religion, it's a chance for us to reflect on those trailblazing women who led the way for our change. Genesis 1 and 20 says, God created human beings in his own image, and in the image God created them, male and female, he created them. As Christians, we know God created each person with equal worth, and he calls us to help the marginalized, in communities where all people aren't afforded the same dignity, their dignity, there are dignity as we are, there are women sisters who are welcome, who are working hard to help our other sisters overcome discriminatory beliefs. Today I want to lift up in scripture Numbers 27, 1 through 11, and it reads as such. 
Then came the donors of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Mikir, the son of Manasseh, and of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, and Milka, and Terza. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away with from among his family? Because he hath no sons. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughters. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family. And he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. May the Lord have a blessing on the hearing and the reading of his word. Imagine the scene. The five daughters of, of Zelophehad, they approach Moses. Eleazar the priest and the chief of all the congregations at the tent of meetings. This is like first Sunday, big church service. This was unheard of in that day. Women going before the male leadership to question the law of inheritance just did not happen. They just didn't do this. If you look back in Numbers 26, you will see that God called Moses to take a census of the new generation of Israel who were about to enter the promised land. Within that list, you will find the names of only men. You didn't see these women's names. So they were unthought of. They were had no thought of as having no importance. They were not numbered. So this took great faith for the five daughters to approach Moses before all the congregations of Israel. They needed the Lord. They needed God to step in and be there for them and make a justice decision. The song, I Need Thee, was written by Annie Hawks. And she wrote that song because one day, the story is told, she was just doing her daily chores. And she became so filled with the sense of needing the Lord. She became so filled with the sense of being near to God. Those words just came about, I need thee. Oh God, I need thee. Every hour. No 
tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee. Yes, those five sisters, they did need the Lord. Those five daughters, I'm sure after they made their plea to God, then they made their plea to Moses. Once the leaders in that congregation were listening, they made their plea. I am sure they had butterflies in their stomachs and they had a tinge of fear. But they were wise women. And the first thing that they did, they cleared their father's name by declaring that he was not one of the rebels. Our father died in the wilderness, they said. He was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. Then they made it clear there were no sons in their father's land and asked if they could have their father's inheritance. Moses, I don't think, really wanted to deal with it. But he did take their case directly to the Lord. And wow, look what happened. Moses listened to what God had to say, and he had compassion on these women. He took the matter straight to God Almighty, the creator of the universe, and the Lord declared that the women were right. The daughters of Zelophehad are correct. The creator of the universe heard the plea of these women, and they declared them as right and gave this statute and rule for a time such as this. If a man dies and has no son, then you shall transfer his inheritance to his daughters. What a wonderful group of sisters. What a brave group of sisters. What a brave group of women. These five women became leaders. They became trailblazers in their time. They had a faith that they trusted God and they trusted that God would provide for them. 
these women were single and they could have been played the victims and said they had no brothers, they had no father, and they just needed to find men to marry. But no, they wanted to be independent, stand on their own two feet, stand on their inheritance, and do the and 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 live a life serving God. They trusted God. They trusted Moses and God, because of their trust and their belief in him, blessed them. Do you have this kind of faith? It took faith for them to take that type of stand. It took faith for them to stretch themselves and reach out. It took faith for them to have to find their voices and speak up because they did not originally have a voice because they were not written in the book. So that kind of crazy faith is what God calls us to have each and every day, to trust him when we can't not see the way, our way through. Trust him and believe in him. The, door, the daughters of Zelophehad believed in God. They did not do this for just right then, they, for the present. They had faith in God that he would deliver the promise of the promised land to them. We can look to Mala, Noah, Hogla, Micah, and Terza as role models. We can look to them as advocates to inspire and renew our fight for justice today in today's world. It's a simple message. Really, these women, these women stood up for themselves and they saw results. Mala, Noah, Hogla, Micah, and Terza's actions remind us that sometimes the simple act of raising your voice for what you believe is right does indeed make a difference. Yes. Pulling from my sister's word does indeed make a difference. And I tell you, if it had not been for the Lord on their side, where would they have been?
these five women had the courage to approach leaders to make a change. As a result of their faith, they were given a portion just the same as the men. They not only gained an inheritance for themselves, but they gained an inheritance for all women in this situation for generations to come. Oh, that we would imitate that faith of these women. For without faith, the scripture says, we cannot please God. They were young, they were focused. Life had dealt them a difficult blow. They had suffered a huge loss. But clearly, there was something that was within them. Something that was within them that kept them from giving up. There's a song, there's a hymn that has been written by Lucy Campbell. It's called Something Within. And the story about Miss Campbell is and how she wrote this song. She remembers, and she remembers um, a blind man who would play, sit up outside, and he'd play on the street. And he'd sing hymns and spiritual songs. And one day, someone came up to him and asked him to play the blues. And he said, I can't do it. They told him, well, we'll pay you. He said again, I can't do it. And they kept asking him, why, why, why can't you do it? You can play, play the blues for us. And he said, I can't do it. And, and all he said, he said, all that I know, that there is something with inside of me and I can't do it. And when she went home, she remembered those words, something something within me. The sisters had something with inside of them that caused them to hold the rein. Those sisters had something within them that caused them to stand firm and to stand fast and to hold on to their desires and dreams. Thank you. 
These women were light for the darkness of their world. Their service was the light not hid under a bushel. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pam, for reminding us that women have power in their voices. And it is that power in their voices. Before I give the benediction, that I want to uh, really invite you as Garrett Bennett celebrates the power of voices for uh, two brave women who integrated Scarrett College for Christian Workers in 1952. Dolores Johnson Richer, as well as Leela Robinson Dabbs. We will celebrate, uh, kick off our year-long celebration of that their courageous acts of lifting their voices. On this Saturday at 12 noon, we will be dedicating one of our houses on campus, the Johnson Robinson House, in their honor for integrating Scarrett 70. 70 years ago. Miss Dolores Johnson Risher will indeed be here. Uh, 91 years young. I uh, will be here as well as the family of the late Leela Robinson Dabbs. We invite you one more announcement before I give the benediction. We invite you to walk the path along the International Garden and view the Stations of the Cross artwork that was created by inmates in the Tennessee Riverbend prison on death row. It is a moving story of Jesus' last days. In addition, there is a prayer station and an opportunity to add ribbons uh, for prayer, for peace for our world, for Ukraine and the rest of our world in such a time as this. The benediction. We thank you for this time of renewal 
and the gift of music that touches our whole being. We go forth from this time with joy in our hearts and love in our steps. Guide us, grant us your wisdom, O Lord, that we may be your presence in the world this day and always. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen and amen.